Okay, so imagine this scenario. You're studying for the big exam tomorrow. You open up your favorite study playlist. You whip out your highlighters, you open your book, and then you start coloring the page. 10 minutes later, you find that the entire page has been colored. We've been taught that being exposed to the material in this way can help us retain information. But can we really say that this is an effective strategy? Well, in a TED talk, Dr. Barbara Oakley, PhD, says so otherwise. When you're looking at a page as you're trying to learn something in a book, people's tendency is to highlight, right? There's something about the motion of the pen on the page that makes you think that it's actually going into your brain, but it often isn't. And so, so often sometimes people will just reread, but that too is simply spinning your wheels. In the book, Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning, the book mentions the story of Michael Young. Michael was once a first year medical student at Georgia Regents University. His classmates had backgrounds in biochemistry, pharmacology, and other degrees that were close to the field of medicine. But unlike his other classmates, Michael had graduated with a master's degree in psychology, and he didn't take the usual pre-med coursework that other students had taken. Because of this, he found himself in the bottom of the class, barely making it to a 65 in his first exam. I couldn't believe how hard it was. It was nothing like any kind of schooling I had done before. His first exam gave him a picture of how difficult his journey was going to be, and he was far from prepared for this kind of education. By the time he reached his second year of medical school, he became one of the top performing students, and by the time he was a fourth year, he'd been given the opportunity to teach struggling students, and he's been teaching them how to pull up their grades. Now, how did he do this? How did he go from being in the bottom of the class to being one of the high achieving students in his medical school? There are many ways to approach studying. A survey done in 2009 showed that the top three strategies used by students were making summaries, rereading, and highlighting. These are forms of passive learning in which material is directly presented to you. The question is, despite the fact that these strategies are more frequently used, are they effective strategies used to study? The answer lies in a study that was done in 1992 in Rice University, which was published in the journal Psychological Science. In the study, 120 subjects were divided into three groups, and they were given the task to memorize 60 pictures. Each picture had a corresponding story associated with them. The week later, they had to answer a test. Each group had been given different study techniques. The first group had pictures that were shown to them along with a cassette recorder which played the words. The second group was given one test, and the third group was given three tests. These were the results. The first group was able to memorize 16 out of the 60 pictures. The second group was able to memorize 24 out of the 60 pictures. But the third group was able to memorize 32 out of the 60 pictures. So, what was the difference between the first group and the second and third group? The difference was that the first group used passive learning, while the second and third group used active recall. Active recall, otherwise known as the testing effect, is learning the material by recalling as much information as possible after being exposed to the material. When you use active recall to learn information, you're using your brain to retrieve as much information as possible, which leads to more retention. In her book, A Mind for Numbers, by Dr. Barbara Oakley, she mentions the story of Dr. Santiago Ramon y Cajal, a Nobel Prize winning doctor who's known as the father of modern neuroscience. Being a doctor was never his decision. In fact, his father forced him into pursuing the profession. Instead, he wanted to be an artist. He made his way through medical school and found work as an army doctor in Cuba. And after numerous attempts at taking competitive examinations, he finally found a position as an anatomical pathologist. This was where he blended his love of art with medicine. Whenever he was in the lab, he would look at microscopic slides of nervous tissue sections, and after viewing the microscope, he would proceed to sketch what he saw. He would then compare his drawings with what he saw under the microscope. And he would do this a number of times. He would view, draw, and compare again. And he did this until he would be able to make sketches of nerve tissue by heart, and thereby strengthening his mind's eye. Now, what can we learn from his habits? It's pretty evident that his work is based on the essence of active recall. After viewing the image under the microscope, he would then put the effort to retrieve the image from his mind so that he could accurately sketch it in the drawing boards. His sketches of neurons led him to win the Nobel Prize in 1905 for his work on structuring the nervous system. To this day, he is known as the father of modern neuroscience as areas of neuroscientific research are rooted on Dr. Cajal's findings. Now, you might be wondering, how could you apply active recall to your learning habits? 
When I first came across this concept, I did a number of experiments and tried to apply it to my studies. I tried reading the material from my textbook and then explaining the concept to myself or someone else. This worked for a while because I had a good grasp on what the concepts were. But the problem was, however, that the majority of the subjects that I took had a tendency to lean towards facts rather than concepts. I struggled with this for a while, but eventually I came across Anki. I love Anki. I can't express how useful it was for me when I was studying for my exams back in undergrad. Anki is a free SRS spaced repetition flashcard app that uses both active recall and spaced repetition. And I can make an entire video of me talking about how I use Anki, but I'm just going to give an example right here. Whenever I read material from my textbook, let's say, glycated hemoglobin reflects the average blood glucose level over the previous 2-3 months. So after that, I would convert the statement into the form of a question, so it would come out as, glycated hemoglobin reflects the blood glucose level over what time span? Next, I type out the answer, which is 2-3 to three months. So after I place the question into the deck, it then appears to me in the form of a flashcard. Glycated hemoglobin reflects the blood glucose level over what time span? 2-3 to three months. And in my opinion, this form of reviewing is more fun compared to passive forms of learning such as highlighting and rereading notes because of the gamification aspect that comes along with it. And if you're not comfortable with going digital, there are always analog alternatives to active recall, such as taking a piece of paper, folding it in half, and then translating information into the form of a question. So in conclusion, active recall is one of the best strategies you could ever adopt when it comes to preparing for a test. The problem with being passively exposed to the material is that it's only going to help you retain so much information. Rather, when you're preparing for the test, you have to practice for the test a multitude of times to get a better sense of familiarity when the test does arrive. And practice doesn't just apply to schoolwork alone, but it also applies to all forms of learning. Like, can you expect to learn a language just by listening to people speak? Can you expect to be a good musician just by listening to other people play? Well, you could actually try it, because just like the study I mentioned earlier, the participants that learned using passive forms of learning did get to memorize a couple of the words after all. But the participants that practiced succeeded twice as well as those who didn't. And if you want to succeed in your learning endeavors, you need to keep on practicing.